I like what you said at the, the in the introduction about this really not being a found footage film, which is how it's been described, as found footage compilation. Um, but it's, it's interesting that a lot of the, the decision-making process is about what and when to shoot, which is really sort of like what a more traditional documentarian sort of thinks about. Uh, so when did you start this, this process and how long did it take? Yeah, so um, actually before I uh, made this film, I was not very familiar with live streaming. Like I had never uh, watched a show. Um, but then there was a tragic incident in China that took place in the fall of 2017. And so there's a young man at his 20s. He fell to his death while doing live streaming at the top of a skyscraper in China. So it was uh, from that moment I started to watch uh, the shows because um, I am curious to know uh, why people would risk their lives uh, live doing live, live streaming. Um, and then, so at the, at the beginning it was like uh, I just randomly um, watch like many, many shows and I follow uh, probably more than 100 um, streaming anchors online. So, so I watch a for eight or 10 hours every day. Yeah. It was until like uh, five or six months later that I, I narrow it down and I only follow like probably 20 people, 20 to 30. Well, yeah. tell, can you talk about that process of narrowing it down? I guess it's sort of like a casting process in a way, like sort of, yeah. you know, like how, you, how did you cast <laughs> the film? Right, so, so of course I was uh, intrigued by many strange and yeah. bizarre, weird activities at the beginning, like um, very eye-catching e extreme activities like eating worms or, you know, dancing nakedly on a frozen lake or less, things like that. Um, but gradually I, I feel like those people, like because all the streaming anchors, they are like performance, but some of them um, you only watch the performance, but for, but for the others, you can also see themselves, like more or less, like they can, uh, you, uh, they, they try to show the most personal parts of the, their life um, and share it with strangers. So, so that's like one of the criteria um, if, if it's a casting. Um, but of course, uh, also I, I realized like there's a large number of live streamers, they, they um, because most anchors, they do it to earn money. But there's a small group, they do it um, in order to get connected with other people. So that's like another um, criteria yeah, when, I was, uh, when I made the decision. Yeah. Did you have any interactions with any of these anchors? Uh, when I was recording, there's no, um, almost no interaction. So I didn't tell them when I was recording and I didn't talk to them when I record the show, but I talked to them while I did not record the shows. And afterwards, after I had a rough car, I started to um, approach them and I contacted uh, almost all of them. Yeah. So they've seen the film? Some no, not. they don't see the film. Yeah, so not. some of them see, uh, they saw the clips. Like they saw the, because they were curious to know what clip I'm going to include in the film. So I sent the clip back to them. Right. Yeah. So you've made, uh, I guess, more traditional documentaries in a way, or more like, a, this is in some ways like an, a mediated observational documentary in a way. You're sort of observing these people, but through the internet. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if your, your relationship, you know, because the central question of documentary is this like ethical relationship between the documentarian and his or her subject. And I'm wondering how you navigated that, whether that this was a question that was on your mind as you were deciding what to shoot and deciding how to put the film together. Yeah, so for me, um, this film is not only about uh, observation, uh, but also about interaction. Of course, the interaction is not b between me and uh, the, the anchors, but also, but it's, it's more about the, their audience and, uh, and um, the anchor. Because live streaming, uh, the media itself, uh, one of the most important features uh, is interaction and is real time. So, so actually that's what um, I'm like interested about, about the media itself. So although um, I didn't tell them uh, when I was recording the show and although I observed them like, um, you know, like I was like a fly on the wall because they didn't know my uh, presence. But um, I don't think that um, 
you know, would in influence their performance in a way because uh, they they knew the presence of other audience of the strangers that they uh, would never meet offline. So so that's the part um, that that's the mo most interesting part for me actually. So, can you talk then about your interest in ch turning this live stream into cinema? Mm -hmm. Because you know you've that removes this this aspect of interaction, um, at least as we understand it, in terms of the live stream and um, it. You know the the present. I mean, I guess the title of the film alludes to this: the presentness, the immediacy of the live stream is is turned into something else when you make it. A film, so that seems. I think that seems to be one of the formal questions that interests you. I think, as suggested by the title of the film. Right. Uh, when I started making the film, uh, actually, um, I had a discussion with my producer John Fan that uh, why people would go to theater to watch a film like this instead of you know watching uh, live streaming shows online at home. So what's the difference between these two? Um, so for us, of course, editing and uh, the way that I construct the film um, is is the thing that make it different than the shows. So. Um, yeah, so 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 although um, you won't you although as an audience now in the theater you won't uh, interact with the with the anchors, but because I turn off the the bully screen function, um, so you don't see uh, their interaction as well. So I think in a way that then uh, the audience in the theater. Uh, become the audience, uh, you know, uh, for the for the shows. Of course, it's totally different because um, I not I because one was in the past and the one is in the present. But I guess um, it's something that I'm very interested in uh, uh, to explore in cinema and the in live streaming. I think that creates an interesting effect too because there's clearly an audience mm. that they're interacting with, but it's not us. Right. Yeah, and then the, and, and that element and, and that interaction is part of the, the text of the film. We often have to sort of assume or like deduce what the what what is what is happening, what the transaction is, or what the exchange is between the the spectators and the the anchors. Yeah. Right. So uh yeah, so because for me, like those anchors, they really uh, wanted to find someone to talk to. Um, like, um, because in real life, they struggle with, uh, you know, face-to-face -face communication and that they, um, they really, they, the loneliness is is kind uh, is the thing that I really want to uh, examine in this film. So so that's why I think um, when, I, when I select those anchors, um, like, um, like, uh, their their struggles is uh, is something that I'm really interested to ex to explore because it's, this is also about like how a uh, human relationship are uh, um, transformed in this digitally uh, connected world because uh, physical distance and time difference is no longer uh, important. Yeah, I'm gonna ask one more and then we can take a few questions from the audience. Uh, I just I'm curious about the. If you can talk a little bit more, you've already alluded to it, the, the editing and construction process. Um, you know, just how many hours of footage was it that you had? How many hundreds of hours? Yeah, I, I would say at least 800 hours. 800 hours. Yeah, because it's just like three or four months. Because I did it like eight to 10 hours per day. So, so how did you arrive at this, this structure? You have a sort of a, a loose sort of episode. You have chapter, very loose chapter headings in, 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 the, in the film. and. And also you, as in your previous film another year, I think there are many long, uh, long takes. You do let, let it play out for a while and you seem interested in sort of how, how duration works in, in cinema. Yeah, because um, so live streaming uh, in China is an industry that, uh, you know, more than millions of users are involved. So, so at the beginning, I knew that I didn't want to focus on any individual or a certain group of people. So I knew this is going to be a, um, portray of um, of you know many different people. Uh, so so when I was at when I was editing the film, I uh, tried to build this you know loose narrative. There's no plot and uh, there's no you know uh, protagonist in a way. Um, so and also uh, I tr because for me um, like there there. Um, 
they are, they are, so, so that's why I built it as four chapters. The first one is like introduction, the second one is more like a diverse uh, like portray of different people, and then this third one is like you get to know them uh, more and more, more deeply, and then that's the ending. So it's, it's actually a very uh, simple um, structure for me. Uh, okay, we can take a few questions uh, from the audience. Uh, yeah, let's start here. Uh, there's a microphone coming, and yeah. yeah. Thank you. It was extraordinary to watch, even those of us over 40 who don't quite understand the technology. But you, you focused very heavily on what I will call in U.S. language disability. We have very strong disability rights, a very strong disability movement, and many of your uh, of, of the characters in your film were disabled. Uh, the young man, the burn victim. Um, in some ways, I think this is going to get picked up by those who are interested in teaching about, you know, disability from 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 inside. Was disability an issue that was driving you? Were you conscious of the fact that uh, disability was going to be one of the themes that at least someone's, you know, some of us in the American audience will will resonate to? Um, I would not say disability is a theme, uh, but for me, that's. Um, but when I was, you know, when I watched the shows, first of course, I was surprised to see that, you know, why uh, many people with disability they have the courage to, you know, uh, interact with people, to talk to people, to share the most personal moments of their lives with strangers. So that's why it uh, gradually or eventually it becomes a film like this, like a, some, um, like a, not not all of the anchors, of course, but some of them they have disabilities because in real life they have this problem, they have this difficulty talking to other people, they don't have the opportunity to get connected with other people, and now with internet, with technology, they finally have, uh, you know, this kind of, you know, opportunity, yeah, to talk to other people, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, right there. Uh, hi, uh, it's a just a really simple question that I think many people might want to ask. Why do you turn this those footage to black and white. I'm really curious about that. Yeah, uh, because the footage was shot by different devices, so they have you know different contrasts and tones. So uh, black and white is a way to keep a certain consistency for the image. Uh, but another important reason for me is that black and white is not what you see in real life and on internet. It's just something different than what you see in your life. So so this way it gives the film its own subjectivity. It just, there's a certain detachment from both the real and the virtual. Sorry. Yep, right there. Uh, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, what kind of viewership were these people, like the amount of viewers these streamers were gathering? And then also the second question is, how much RMB do the virtual coins translate to roughly? Okay, what's the first? So as for the viewership, uh, I guess, well, um, so, you know, it's not just about seeing and being seen by other people. It's more complicated than that. So it's, I would say it's more, it's more like interaction, it's communication, because um, those, the audience not just watch the show, they also talk to them, and also they, they, they send them gifts. So it's like planes or rockets or cars, and the anchors can uh, redeem the gifts as real money. So, so it's a way to earn money as well. Um, so, and some of the anchors, not the anchors in my film, but in China, there are, there are people who get very famous and get rich by doing live streaming. So I would say it's a, it's a very complicated relationship in a way, mm, and it becomes an industry. And, uh, Yeah. Okay. Um, so for those for those internet celebrity, they can earn millions of RMB by even in a month. Um, but for those people in my film, I guess eventually, except one or two, like the girl who uh, went to the bathroom while doing live streaming, he, she probably is the most uh, popular anchor in my uh, in my film. So she has uh, hundreds of thousands 
fans. But the other people, they probably have only 10, sometimes or 20 people watch the show, so they, they didn't earn a lot of money, probably zero. Hi, thank you. This is a great show. I mean, I'm a Chinese, but I never used like streaming. I never watched this before, so that's really incredible. Um, so basically, I have two questions. The first question is, why do you choose Perfect Present as the title of the film? And the second question is, um, I don't know if you have any observation about the audience behind the screen, uh, behind the uh, who watch the show because you said the interaction is the core of the stream living, but I didn't see much on the film, so I want to know what's your understanding about this group of inter uh, uh, this group of people because it's really hard for me to understand why they can spend hours on this. Like for me, it's just a waste of time, and <laughs> so I want to know what's your understanding. Yeah, thank you. So as for the title first, it's a time tense. Um, so for me, it really uh, tells something about the relationship between uh, the past and the present. So it's one of the important features of uh, live streaming because live streaming is about the it's about present. Like when you're doing it, it's it's real time, but also it's about the cinema. Um, so and uh, perfect. Well, so 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 yeah, I like this word, these two words separately and together. So separately, perfect for me. Uh, um, it's, so someone told me that they think it's an ironic title because those anchors in my film, they are in situations that are, that are far, far away from perfect. They are in a very like an imperfect uh, situation. But for me, it's about their endeavor and about their longing of a present, of a perfect life. So, so I think, so that's why I use mm, this title. And as, as for the audience, well, mm, I would say because I spent like hundreds of hours with them online, uh, and I did it in Chicago uh, while you know all the anchors in China. So for me, I really feel them in a way, like because also because maybe because it's because of my personal experience, because you know like my family and the friends they are in China. So for me, like the screen, uh, no matter it's smartphone screen or uh, computer screen, is a very important. Uh, it's a very it's a important component for me to you know to get connected with my family to hang out with my family and the friends back in uh, in China. So I think that's so my experience, although it's totally different uh, than the experience of those anchors, but I I can feel them. And uh, you know like the like the girl who works in the underwear factory, she in the in in her in her in her real life, um, she almost has no nobody to talk to. Like, um, she works 29 days a month. Um, so in the real world, her world is very, very small. And, uh, you know, uh, she has no chance and nobody to talk to. So she used the internet just to, you know, um, interact with other people, to talk to other people. So I guess that's, like, why those people, they they think live streaming is very important because it's just, just simply to talk to other people. Yeah. Could you give a bit more context to the, the the opening titles of the film? You sort of explain sort of the rise the rise of live streaming, and then there's mention of a, a cybersecurity law mm -hmm. from I think a year or two ago. And what effect did that have on these platforms? Yeah. So uh, because live streaming is very is a very new thing in China. So at the beginning, um, the authority they had no idea uh, what's going on in a way. So at first, the um, what you can do online is more like open, like can you, like you can do many things. And uh, and but then gradually uh, the regulations become uh, more and more strict. So uh, now um, I guess. You cannot uh, show like you cannot smoke in when you're doing live streaming. So when so when you, I don't know if you noticed that in the film that uh, this anchor uh, he smokes, but he uh, got you know out of the frame and then he uh, so and then he got back to the frame. So because like he uh, you cannot show show the cigarettes. Um, and another thing is that like. Um, for example, like a woman uh, seductively eating bananas is banned now. Uh, <laughs> and also, uh, but, but I mean, 
so, so that's why I think, um, so I put the title card to explain the context because I think it, uh, that those regulations really uh, influence or, you know, what you can do and what you cannot do online. So there's a list of prohibitions, like eating bananas and... Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> there's something like that, but at the, at the beginning it was um, very open. So, yeah, so um, you see some like very bizarre and the strange things, yeah. Okay, uh, I think we can take a one or two more. Yeah, there's a hand. Is there a hand there? Or, yeah. Uh, I don't know a lot about live streaming, but I presume it's a worldwide phenomenon. And when I was looking at your film, I was wondering whether there were certain things that were unique to China, or, we, or if we were in uh, um, other countries in the US or anywhere else, would we see similar kinds of things and similar kinds of people uh, who would be doing this sort of uh, streaming? Yeah, I, I mean, if you just watch those the, those Chinese platforms that I uh, watch, then you can watch it everywhere in the world. But of course, um, because there are also, I, I know there are people who are doing live streaming in U in United States and use different platforms. Uh, I guess that's probably um, different in a way. But it's not just because of live streaming; it's just because of the culture. Yeah, it's just different. All right, we can take uh, one final question, if anybody has one. No? Uh, all right, um, let me just end by asking you, uh, do you know what you're working on next? Are you working on something in the virtual or real world next? <laughs> Probably uh, in the real world, but also I think I mean the the boundary between the the real and the virtual becomes 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 more and more uh, blurry. So yeah, so my my next film still in the in the actual physical world, not online. <laughs> All right, Shengzi, thanks so much for yeah, the film thank you. and for yes. being here. Thank you.